This is the story of a local Lua legend called Obondo Mumbo and how he got his name. Obondo Mumbo was born to a Denyo who was from Sakwa and lived in a village known as Ajigo. A Denyo, the father of Obondo, was a prominent person in Sakwa and was well known because he was a seer or what the Lua peoples call Jabilo. He had moderate wealth which, at that time, was measured in livestock. Obondo was an average youth, living an average life before the white man came. At around the age of 30 years old, when a man is considered mature, he heard that his father's sister, his aunt, had died. And as was the practice in those days, he gathered his peers and relatives to accompany him to the funeral at Seme. He picked his relatives across from the neighboring village called Nyabenge and crossed over to another place called Ajigo to inform them of his intent to travel and his wish for them to accompany him. As he was crossing over to his home, after talking to his relatives, he felt something before him like a whirlwind, or what the Luas call Lihudu, or Kal Kalausi. He stopped in fear, but he saw nothing in particular. He went home, and immediately thereafter, he became very sick, and would at all times see an image. The sickness continued for a while, and it made him behave like a madman. He would run all over, talking in strange languages to no one in particular. He ran very fast to a place with water called Ugambe, on the shores of Lake Victoria. Even as he took off, no one mustered the courage to try and stop him, as he was a very strong man. When he reached the lake, he jumped in and floated on the water for several days without eating anything. His family searched for him in vain. Although the search went on for it, long, lasting between three and four weeks. Finally, it seemed that a person who had come from Sakwa found him floating on the waters of the lake. This happened in 1919, after the end of the First World War, when the white man had already come into the country. When he was finally brought home, he talked of how he had seen a huge snake known as the mother of all fishes, and all the things that lived in the lake, such as cows, goats, and chicken. They were all white in color. He narrated how crocodiles, hippos, and other fierce animals of the wild that lived in the waters were his constant companion and did not hurt him at all because of the spirit called Mumbo that he had in them and who protected him from being hurt by the aquatic animals. He was able to cross the waters of Lake Victoria floating on his back. For him, being the lake being in the lake was a form of training because Mumbo taught him new things that he had not known before. Mumbo made him live in the water like a fish. Mumbo taught him many things, among them were the skills about medicinal herbs, foreseeing and foretelling, court or watch, about various medicines and how to look into the future, how to keep secrets and identify bad persons who were thieves and picked them out among people. All the herbs he used to heal people with came from the waters and not from the forests and bushes. He went to the lake where he consulted over what to use. It was not known what he ate for the length of time he was in the waters. Sometimes he could roast fish along the shores made by fires of the fishermen. He was one day seen lying on stones by the lakeside. He was weak and could not walk properly. He seemed to float on air. Before being taken home, his people built a small hut by the lake shore. In this hut, a Thanksgiving ceremony, Sawa, was performed. A white he goat was slaughtered in the hut and prayers held for Mumbo. They cast their prayers and their food into the sea for Mumbo to eat and be appeased so that many people could bring wealth to Obondo. 
because it was to a bondo upon whom he had bestowed this gift. They prayed that the gift of knowledge of herbs and cleansing medicine called Manyasi would stay on him before spreading to other people. On reaching home, a great sacrificial ceremony called Liswa was performed outside the gate to welcome him home. This was a bigger function than the one by the lakeside. White he goat and a white chicken were slaughtered. Inside the home, another Thanksgiving ceremony was performed and this was bigger than all the others and went, f went on for much longer. In this ceremony, Obondo did not wear normal clothes. He wore mainly goatskin. He wore straps made from goatskin, his knees on his head, neck, hands, and fingers. From then, he never shaved his hair or beard, and every time he walked, he patted his chin and his head. He never sat on the seat or slept on the mat. He always sat on the ground and slept on the ground. His pronouncements always came true. When he pronounced that lightning would strike a person, a livestock, or even a house, it happened, just as he had predicted. When a person lost something, and he was called to help in identifying the thief, he would take the metal plate of a hole and heat it over a fire until it became red hot. Then all the people would be gathered. The hot plate would be placed on the hands of everyone. For the innocent, the hot iron would feel cold as ice, but the thief would be burnt by merely the heat from the hot plate. Many people from Karatang, Ugenya, Seme, Game, Uyoma, Imbo, Alego, and Asakwa knew Obondo, for he was able to treat many of their diverse ailments. He treated all the people, who included men, women, and children alike. When he wanted to marry, none of the girls he desired could resist. He married eight wives, using the wealth he derived from those who were brought by the spirit of Mumbo. He became very rich, and his wealth included cows, sheep, money, clothes, and blankets. He really had not much knowledge about how to use money. He normally just dug a hole in the bush or forest and hid the money from people's eyes. He hid from people. Much as he knew a lot about things of the world, he did not know when he was going to die. One day, his brother Ajuang invited him for a drinking spree of Congo, a local brew. Soon after, he fell sick. However, he had been sus suspicious about the brew, even before drinking it. He died after a day. It was claimed by many that Ajuang killed it, using poison. All the monies that had been buried in the forest could not be recovered immediately because no one knew where he kept it. One year after his death, he appeared in a dream to someone and told the person where the money was buried. This person was Elkana Madindo. He went to the forest and found the place where the money was buried and brought it to the family. Elkana was one of the adherents of Obondo, who also had the spirit of Mumbo. Obondo Mumbo, son of Adenyo, of the Kowak clan, as he was praised, helped the people of Sakwa and the communities around Sakwa in many battles. He gained respect for helping to resolve conflict among the communities who fought over issues of theft of livestock, and he was held in awe and greatly feared. At the same time, he was the best medicine man, Ajuaga, in Sakwa. For him, his gift in healing was for helping mankind and not making money. He loved people. He was wealthy, humble, and open-hearted, kind, generous, and highly respected. He was the best in the then central Nyanza, in the class of magicians. He let the legacy of Mumbo, the great seer of East Africa, live on in the winds of wisdom. <laughs>